The last topic that again I know you've had extensively at GCSE, we also touch on it in the kinetics extension material, so I'm not going to dwell too much on it, but is the idea of half-life. Of course, half-life represented by T subscript to half is the time taken to use up half of the amount with which you started. Now, what's nice about radioactive decay is that the half-life is independent of the amount that you have. This means, of course, it's first order kinetics and there's a relationship between the half-life and the rate constant for those of you who looked at the kinetics extension material. For those who, do, who didn't, what we're saying there is if you've got 100 grams and you go to 50 grams and then 50 grams to 25 and then 25 to 12.5 so in other words each time this is your halving what you start with as shown in this pretty little graph here the time taken is the same so each one of these little boxes is representing a half-life so it's a half-life to go from 100 to 50 it's another half-life to go from 50 to 25 it's another half-life to go from 25 to 12 and a half and so on and so on and so on okay it's important to note that the half-life doesn't have to be constant for the different um, half segments here. Um, if you don't have, for example, a first order reaction, then the time taken to go from 100 to 50 is different from the time taken to go from 50 to 25, which is different from the time taken to go from 25 to 12 and a half. It's a very important part and factor and aspect of radioactive decay that the half-life is independent of how much of it you have. The half-life just depends upon the particular isotope. Now it's important to note how we might measure half-lives and amounts in terms of radioactivity. The obvious thing as I've done here is you have grams and moles. So um, as I've done here, 100 grams to 50 grams, 50 grams, 25 grams, and so on. However, the way that radioactivity or radiation is measured can also be used for this. Thus, for example, one common unit for measuring radiation is at the Becquerel, okay? And this is the number of disintegrations per second. And it's usually a really, really big number and so let's say that you start off with a species a radioactive species that's giving you um, a million disintegrations per second so a million becquerels well after um, one half-life it's only going to give you 500,000 disintegration 500,000 becquerels and then another half-life would be 250,000 becquerels another unit the Curie um, is uh, relative to the decay of one gram of uranium and one curie the symbol for curie is ci for some weird reason 3.7 times 10 to the 10 becquerels so you can expect to see as you study more radioactivity the amount of radioactivity expressed officially in becquerels or in curies those of you who have watched chernobyl will know that they were going on about rungeons rungeons and rungeons well rungeons is actually associated with the um, charge going through air the ionization of air and so really doesn't have much to do with a particular substance so a lot of times you don't want to use it and it is a very archaic unit now anyway very quick movie on half-life as part of the very quick set of movies associated with the physical aspects of decay